Good evening, boys and ghouls. Do you like scary stories? <laughs> <coughs> Scare Me is brought to us by director Josh Rubin and stars Josh Rubin and Aya Cash as Fred and Fanny. Fred has gone up to a cabin in the secluded snowy woods to write his next big horror screenplay. And when I say next big, I mean his only, because I don't think he's actually in this business as of yet, but he is trying to get into it. it doesn't ever really say, but we get the idea that he hasn't been super successful, at least within this arena, up to this point. And he is hoping that this will be his big break. While while there, one day on a run, he meets Fanny. It turns out Fanny is a best-selling author of a recent horror book that everybody's talking about. One night, when the power goes out, Fanny shows up at Fred's cabin and says, Hey, I don't want to be alone. There's no power. It's kind of dark and scary out here. Can we hang out for a while? So they do. And while sitting there with absolutely nothing to do, they decide, Hey, we're both horror writers. Let's tell each other scary stories. And that's what they do. But as they tell these more and more more intense stories to each other throughout the night, it seems as some other tensions are starting to rise as well. And quite possibly, all these tensions won't be able to be taken out in story time. Scare Me is an odd movie. I didn't say it was a bad movie, I said it was an odd movie. This is effectively a movie about two people that sit in one room and tell each other stories the whole time. Now they do use some creative camera work at times to kind of help with these stories, but it never leaves the cabin. It's not like they're telling these stories and we go off and see the story take place. No, it's them just sitting there telling the story to each other. You would expect that we would see these stories as they were happening, but no, like I said, that's not the case. It all takes place right here in this cabin. Now, at one point in the movie, another character does show up and take part in the festivities for a while. And that definitely kept things a bit fresh, but for the most part, it's just Fred and Fanny sitting in this room, talking to each other, trying to scare each other. So that being said, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this movie is not going to be for everybody. As a whole, I would say that this movie is more comedy than anything. But it absolutely has an air of foreboding throughout the entire thing. You constantly feel like there's something you don't know. There's something going on here and you don't have all the details as of yet. And you're kind of right. But unfortunately, when you figure out what this thing is, it's not really as earth shattering as you were hoping, nor is the outcome. Now, there are aspects of the outcome, aka the ending of the movie that I did like, but admittedly, it wasn't as satisfying as I had hoped it would be. This movie's interesting, that's for sure. Now, interesting does not necessarily mean it's good. It just means that it is interesting. As a whole, I'll say I did like the idea of the movie. However, its execution at times can drag a bit. It's really well made, and I really enjoyed what they did with it, but it's almost more like it's an experience Experiment, like they were trying to see if they could do this thing and keep it interesting rather than just trying to tell this story. It's like they wanted to do a traditional anthology film where these characters would tell stories and we would see these stories take place on screen. But they said, no, let's do something different. Let's just have them tell them. Let's see if we can make it interesting with these people just talking about it. And in that regard, I think they did a good job. They kept it as interesting as you possibly could keep two people sitting here talking talking to each other about scary stories in a dark room for an hour and a half. Now that being said, the movie's not like a total bore. There is entertainment to be had here, and as I said, it is interesting at the very least. They do a really good job of using some camera trickery to kind of play out some of these stories they're telling. And Ruben also shows that he could film a very tense scene. There are quite a few moments in this film that are extremely tense that you think something legit is about to happen. They're set up and shot fantastically, it just typically doesn't pay off. It's almost as if Ruben was wanting to show us, hey, you know what? I can do this. I can expertly shoot these types of scenes, but I'm going to show you that I can, but I'm just not going to go any further with it. Our performances here are all really good. Now, there's only four people in this movie, one of which is only in the movie for about one or two minutes. The other one is in the movie for maybe 15, and then there's the two main characters that are in pretty much the whole entire thing. So the vast majority of this movie 
movie absolutely rides on Cash and Ruben. And they don't disappoint. Regardless of what you think of the story and its execution in this movie, you can't deny that these two performances are very good. And they do have great chemistry together. In fact, all the characters in the movie that interact have really good chemistry. They're very believable in their roles. Even though one of them is a bit heightened, it's still believable. We really like this character. Now, as I mentioned, this movie is primarily a comedy, though it is a bit of a dark comedy. While a lot of the comedy here I did find funny, it is all quite dry. It's not like laugh out loud dry. The vast majority of it is more chuckle worthy. You don't really have any moments besides maybe one or two that are actually legitimately laugh out loud funny. As a whole, the movie's comedy is just kind of pleasing. And I think that is part of the reason that the movie does seem like it drags a bit. Because since they are effectively making an anthology movie, but not cutting away for us to see those stories unfold, they're depending a lot more on the comedy and interactions between these characters. And while yet it's there, and it, as I said, is overall pleasing, it's not enough to sell the entire movie. The movie overall just seems like it has a bit of an identity crisis. At times, it seems like it wants to be a comedy, but it's not quite there. At other times, it seems like it wants to be more of a thriller horror, but it's not quite there either. And at other times, it seems like it wants to be a bit of a satirical look at pop culture society, and it's not quite there either. Though it does seem like it achieves that one maybe just a little bit more than the others. However, none of these aspects of the movie are ever fully realized. It does a decent job with all of them, but not a great job with any of them. Guys, at the end of the day, I did enjoy Scare Me, but I didn't love it. It was more interesting than entertaining, if that makes any sense. It had some great performances, and interesting if not at times too slow a story, and a bit of an ironic ending that not everybody's gonna love. And while this movie is definitely not gonna be for everybody, if it sounds like something you might be interested in, at best, check it out on streaming. Across the street. Overall, had a pretty good time with this movie, but as I said, this is absolutely not going to be for everybody. If I had to guess, I would say this is probably not going to be for most people. But if you do like you some experimental film, then check this one out because it is definitely very experimental. So there it is, guys, my review of Scare Me. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Aspen. I've cheese that veggie, right? You seem like a fella who might be interested in some scary stories. And you seem correct. Hit me, Scare Master. Now, I mentioned how this movie had some lulls in the story, but it somewhat kept it afloat. Now, I gotta say, one of the main things that kept it afloat is partway through the movie, and it is only for a short period of time, another character shows up. And this character, played by Chris Red, is fucking hilarious. If it wasn't for this character being inserted for this few minutes in the movie, it just probably would have lost a whole lot of what it did have going for it. This character is really over the top, especially when compared to these two more or less normal characters that we've had so far, but that over the top nature of his character just really livened the movie up quite a bit. But what's even better, they took this character who's already kind of wired to the max and they gave him cocaine. Yep. Probably the best part of the damn movie right there. Cocaine's a hell of a drug!